out here with Josh. What up? The, the man himself. We're on a 2024 new build. Soon these are gonna move to 2025 soon, man. Yeah, we gotta update the report software. Yeah, we're getting old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 2024 new build. Uh, we found some th things already. You know, follow us around and uh, yeah, see, see what we find. Yep. This roof's a little steeper. So you can see walking up these things. You wanna make sure you have some good shoes. And uh, our, we've our, this is the second time we've been out here. The first time, uh, our, our first inspector called out a bunch of buckled boots and damaged boots and flashing not painted. And it looks like they took care of everything, which is good. Yeah, a little, a little bit of a buckle over here on the front side. You got a baby buckle? Yeah. Oh, right down there? Yeah, just a little bit. All right, yeah. Just get a little cap on it. Everything else looking pretty clean. Ooh, this is a steep one. Why'd you make us get up here, Chris? <laughs> it was your idea. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't look this steep from the ground. It did not. You are right. You know, it's funny. Do you remember when you first started inspecting, like, I don't know, however long ago, and you walked your first roof with me? I, yeah. Yeah, now you're like, on oh, what is this, like a 10 and 12? <laughs> yeah, well, that, that first one was like a four and 12, and I was walking on it on all fours. Yeah, on all fours. Yeah, I, I felt like Spider-Man. Yeah. And you were walking around like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Like, yeah. What a goober. Yeah. Yeah. You have right, to come, so, come so down here to see what, it. What do we got over here? Uh, if you come around the corner, the, that top ridge, they yeah. didn't put enough nails in it, and so it's already starting to buckle. And oh, okay. Loose. Yeah. You kind of see the bow on it, but if you come down on, on this side, you can see, see it around the corner a little bit they better. Need to add in some fasteners. Yeah. I'll stay below you. I'll catch you if you fall. Right. <laughs> oh, you can see a lift in there. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Just need to add in some additional fasteners to the ridge vent. I'm sure they're going to ask, what kind of shoes are you wearing over there, Josh? Uh, these are Columbia. Oh, I forget the name of them. Hold on, let me see. They're like uh, hiking shell. They're waterproof. Uh, I didn't say the name. Yeah, they're, they're waterproof. They got extra the grips on the, extra grips right on the bottom. They're rubber soled, so. You know, they stick. They stick, and then you know, with the rubber sole, it helps somewhat protect you from electricity. Yeah. So and I, I wear the. Uh, I haven't changed. I still wear the Under Armour uh, tactical boot. I stick like glue on these things. So. Yeah. Yeah. These pretty, I've I bought nice. three three pairs of the same shoe the past three years. Got a little bit of standing water in the gutter over here. All right. We got some jams out here. This should be a shutoff valve for the sprint, the backflow. They have to have a shutoff valve between the water meter and the uh, the backflow preventer. There you go. Yeah, it didn't have to be right here. It just has to be between the backflow and wherever the meter box is by the street. Nice. Yeah. So above the mechanical exhaust covers. Uh, Technically, the James Hardy manufacturer installation manual says it should have uh, blocking behind it and Z flashing over that blocking. Um, I've done like over 2,000 houses, and I've never once seen We've it. We've seen it once. On, I didn't. You oh. saw it. You took a picture. Oh, yeah. I, I've never seen it personally, so I, I don't think it exists. Yeah, it was in my neighborhood <laughs> behind my old townhouse. They have blocking. I was like, it exists. Yeah, someone did it right. Yeah, so according to the Hardy manufacturer, you need blocking and Z flashing across all mechanical penetrations. Yeah, a yeah, any, any opening. Yep. Around hose bibs too. You're oh. supposed to put square blocking around hose bibs and yeah. put the flashing above. Yeah, on the non-brick houses, on the hardy houses. Yeah, yeah but we do not see that. Not it should once be. There. Have I ever seen it? If I ever see it, I'm going to buy a lotto ticket. On this side of the house, we found another problem with the the 
fiber cement trim installation, the bottom corner of the bottom horizontal board should actually have a vertical joint and not a horizontal joint. So as water comes down the window frame while it's raining, it's going to go down the vertical joint and just drain out. Apparently they have a horizontal joint, and so once that caulking wears away, that's an entry point for water around the window. Yeah. Okay, uh, the very next window over, they did that one correct, but not this one. Yeah. So we checked on the, the water heater and it does say for outdoor installation only. Uh, we did have a problem on the inside. Anytime we turned more than one fixture on at a time, the hot water pressure dropped uh, pretty significantly. So we're trying to verify that uh, th this is working like it should. Um, also that it's the correct size for the home because these do come in different sizes. Also at the top, it does say for uh, use in mobile homes only. So we're gonna verify that that is, uh, it can still be installed on a standard home. Yeah, probably might be too small. Yeah. So we're going to pull up the app and check it out. Uh, we have a low spot in the grating and it's full of water. So easy fix. Yeah, at, yeah they should put some fill right here, slope it properly. You do have surface drains uh, down by the AC and the one down here. So it should flow towards the surface drains and the way from the house. Josh and I checked the water pressure on the house too and it's sitting around 55, 55 PSI. And so we know it's not the um, we know it's not the supply to the house, so if we're having low water pressure on our hot water side, it's, it's probably the water heater. So we got a uh, Friday 5 p.m. hard stop on the gutter. They got to the edge and they didn't put the last eight foot piece on. Yeah, that happens sometimes, yeah. you know. It's time to go home. All right, moving into the attic space. This attic space is looking pretty good so far. A good amount of insulation. They have a lot of baffles, so we have some good airflow. The ridge vent is open. We can see the ridge vent. So we have airflow coming from the soffits all the way up to the ridge vent. All the mechanical exhaust vents are going outside and they're sealed up really well. And all the duct work is lifted and suspended and separated. So some really good stuff in this attic space, but Josh did find one thing. We always find something, don't we, Josh? Always. <laughs> always. <laughs> always. So we have an April air dehumidifier installed, um, which is a nice dehumidifier. But one thing that we see, actually two, two things. One is the the drain line off the pan underneath is not sloped very well, so we we'll recommend them to slope that a little bit better. It goes down and then back up as it crosses under the AC unit. Uh, the next thing is the supply off the dehumidifier uh, starts here, and you can see it, it follows across here, and it dumps right into the supply plenum for the upstairs uh, registers. And when you install it like that, um, the air that comes off the dehumidifier is dry, but it's also very hot, uh, averaging around 90 to 100 degrees. And so you have this hot, dry air that's being pumped directly into the uh, supply registers for the upstairs. So when the AC is not running, it's going to make it feel like the furnace is running. And when the AC is running, it's going to make it feel like the AC is not cooling very well. Um, the April Air manufacturer recommends that if you're going to install it that way, you should have a two foot, 24 inch. Um, extender on the, the plenum box so that it mixes better. Um, but the uh, recommended install is to take the supply off the uh, dehumidifier and put it back into the return so that dehumidified air, it's dry but it's warm, can go through the AC system to be cool before it gets put into the house. So that's something we'll recommend. Um, I have come back on one year warranties with this type of install, and uh, my clients after a year are complaining about uh, ducts not being balanced, rooms being warm warmer than others, um, it feeling not like the AC is running properly. So it definitely does make a difference with how you install the duct system for the dehumidifier. All right, there you go. We're going to wrap that video up there. Pretty good finds uh, today. It is a new build and um, it, it's, it's a really nice new build. It's really clean and it looks really good, but uh, we are always going to find something. So make sure you get that house inspected. And please, if you like these videos, please hit that like and subscribe button and catch us on the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.